Hey guys, what's going on? This is Adam Ever Miller with AE Tuts Plus, and uh, I gotta tell you, I was just, I sat down and I was ready to record a tutorial uh, showing how I created these, this kind of odometer looking um, set of numbers that I used in the hex value um, short video that I, that I created uh, like a week or two ago. Um, and so I was about to record it and, and, and show you, and I actually did one pass, and then I thought, I wonder if anybody else has even tried this in the past. And then I discover my main man, Aaron Rabinowitz, he totally already did this. And he actually did a better job than I was about to do. So I'm gonna save your time. And I'm just gonna, there's a link below, go ahead and check this out. I actually sat here and I watched this and I was just like, crap, this is, wow. I, I, I should have just watched the tutorial in the first place instead of figuring it out. But it meant a little bit more that I figured it out. So all I'm gonna show you today, because he did a little bit of different thing, he used, uh, Offset rather than a motion tile is what I'd use to to random uh, to to shift the numbers, um, but essentially it's the same tutorial. Um, so go go watch it over there. But I am going to show you how I created kind of this fun little encasing, which um, was looks a little bit nicer than any of the ones in his example. So that's pretty much all I got going for me. So. Uh, what we're gonna do is let's, I'm just gonna basically just dissect, well, I'll, I'll start from where his would have kind of left off. Okay, so he had created um, numbers zero through nine, and I had done the same thing, and then bringing them into a new composition, uh, I had used the uh, motion tile, so then I could link the Y value to, um, to an expression slider, excuse me, which would allow me to then uh, rotate, well actually this one I use an angle control, but basically then you can rotate and animate these guys individually. Well the next step was to make it look legit 3D. Um, and so what I did is create a new adjustment layer and I applied a bulge to it. Oops, let's type bulge, okay. Um, do, 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 do. Do I not know how to spell bulge? Bulge, bulge, there it is. Wow, I don't know why I thought there was a D in there. Um, all right, and then from there what we can do is, let's start it at the very, very beginning and we'll, let's actually grab each one of these controllers and reset it back at zero. Do the same thing for here, reset. We wanna bring each one back to zero. Okay, cool. Now, grabbing this bulge layer, we can slide the edges out and bring it right down. Zero is what we're focusing on. Obviously, this is gonna be a little bit too much, um, but you can adjust the radius, the vertical and horizontal. And so I'm gonna make it really wide and then I'm gonna knock down the height considerably. But just give it a little bit of a nice rounded edge there. Um, let's pop it right in the middle of the zero. Okay, maybe, yeah, point, 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 point three, point four. Yeah, point three looks better. Okay, point three. Um, so now that we've done that, we want to, it does. It still doesn't look good, it just looks like bulbous uh, strips. Let's create another adjustment layer, new adjustment layer. And this one we're going to apply fill. Not your friend fill, but the color, the plug-in fill. And we'll make this black. And I'm gonna take it off for a brief moment and I'm just gonna create a quick mask with this selected, you can just use the two strips here. Let's just create a quick mask right there. Then as we turn this on, what we wanna do is we wanna invert the mask, so we'll subtract it. And then we could actually grab these guys, bring them down a little bit. Okay, then we wanna take the feather, hitting F, we wanna feather a little bit, just to give it some natural, some natural shading. Um, and that's looking pretty good. Okay, now to create this thing, I'll just kind of start from scratch. All right, so we have it. I quick applied a mask to the whole comp so that if I turn it off, you can see I've just masked this and I had shaded a little bit more, but basically mask it just there so that as, and, and we're gonna give it a slight feather. Um, so as you can see here, let me just create a new white solid. We'll create, we'll do just a little bit of a feather so it kind of eases in there, so it, it'll kind of fade off in the distance. We'll create another solid, we'll make this one black. 
Okay, and then we will take and do a rounded, lowering the opacity a little bit, kind of a rounded mask. Let's hold shift. And something I just realized due to uh, one of Rich's posts that um, Chris and Trish Meyer did about creating motion graphics. If you, while holding down this, you can do the up and down arrow and that'll determine how round your edges are. Super cool, always learning good new stuff. So we'll go ahead and make it decently round, not crazy round. We'll go right there with it. And then we'll go ahead and just grab, we'll grab these points and we'll bring them in a little bit. All right. And then bringing the opacity back up to 100, we want to drag that below, okay? Oops, not below everything, just below that. So we have, it kind of looks like it's coming coming out at you. Uh, the last thing that I'm gonna do to, to just to give it to it's another element of 3D is I'm going to create another solid, make it black, and this is just gonna be our shadow. Pretty much everything, whenever you're doing any sort of graphics, graphical element or you're starting from scratch, you have to apply a gradient, and, and that was not something that I always made a priority, but if you think about it, everything in life you're able to see as a result of a light. Well, every light has a source, and everything is either closer or farther away from the source. So essentially, like everything since our birth, everything we've ever seen has in real life has some element of a gradient. So the more that you can shift, the more that you can take, and that's why we like vignettes. Like right now, this is just plain white. If we create... I'll just do one more black solid here. Um, you know, that's why we like to grab, um, to, to have just a little bit of a, of a vignette on everything that we do because it just, it makes it feel uh, more, more natural. Um, and we'll knock it down to 35 because light is never that, that solid all the time. There's always gonna be darker spots and brighter spots. Okay, well that said, I'll take that off for a moment. Let's just create a little bit of an outer shadow, almost like, a, what's the word in the 3D programs that they use all the time? Ambient occlusion, so cool. Um, all right, so I'll just grab another quick mask here and I'll just draw this guy right there. And this is, this is just, we're barely even gonna see it, but what it's gonna do is just add a little bit, just a little bit of depth, okay. So we'll darken it, just give it a little bit more, and then we'll maybe bring bring each one out just a little bit. Okay. You're gonna notice a big difference in your output if you start to pay attention to, to details, these little sort of details here. Um, it's just gonna add just that extra little bit of, of shadow, and we can even knock it down just a bit more. I'll make it maybe 40. All right. Well, that's it. I don't even need to go through the strips and animating because that will be done in the other tutorial. But as far as getting, getting this exact specific end result, if you want, you can do, you can have it be letters or numbers or whatever you want. Um, but to get this specific, more 3D rounded looking um, odometer, this is how I did it. So there you go. Have a good one, guys.